everyone. I'm not going to say good morning because it's actually late afternoon. It has been an absolutely hectic day so far. Um, got heaps done but not as much as I would like to get done and I actually did think twice about doing this vlog or not this week because um, just this morning my brain has just been so frazzled I've not really known what I'm doing. I, it's almost two o'clock and I'm only just getting around to making myself some lunch. I've got these um, crisp bread things and my mum brought down a pot full of pate this morning very quickly so I thought I'll have some of that for lunch. Um, I actually started the day off um, popping over to a supplier to go and get some coconut oil and some more um, other oils for the, the soap making. Um, after that I actually had my six month um, specialist checkup for the PCOS and she is so super happy with all of the blood results that have come back. They are the best blood results I've had since we've had like our health records all on electronic file they're sort of the best things and she said it's just if i'd had those done before everything they would never have known there was something wrong so she's really really happy with all of the results and at long last my body is no longer over producing insulin when it actually shouldn't be so my body has no excess insulin in it which is really good because if you do have too much insulin in your body that it's not using that's when you get type 2 diabetes and I have had that in my very early 20s um, before we actually discovered what was going on um, and we were able to get rid of it so at least now I know that that sort of risk is very much um, being reduced so that was all really good news and then we came down to the shop um, my husband came with me and um, because the I needed him to do something down here for me. So we've just had school holidays um, in Queensland here and in the last week some of the kids have been rather bored um, and have been getting up into mischief in the street so I said to my husband we're not really using the security cameras at home anymore can I have them down at the shop so this morning he chauffeured me around and then he came down and he actually fitted in one of these security cameras for me which gives me a full view of the front of the shop so I know that the cameras aren't actually going to stop anyone who is intent on actually breaking in and stealing stuff. They're still going to do it. Um, but it is hopefully going to stop any of the kids who are just looking to create a little bit of mischief. They've basically been going around and just breaking windows, um, graffitiing and all that sort of stuff. So hopefully at night time it will actually glow red. So it should be enough of a deterrent to say, hey, there's a camera in there. Let's leave that place alone. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I've been pretty lucky and I think some of that's to do with having in the tattoo parlor next door they do work quite late at night so people don't tend to hang around um, the front of our shops but there has been a little bit of damage in the back area of the shops um, they broke into one of the little sheds out there so I just said to husband I'd feel a little bit more safer knowing I've got them there um, at least I do have it can go towards the insurance if anyone does do anything we've got footage to see who's done it so we put those in I've got a couple of little signs up at the front of the shop saying smile <laughs> so because I legally have to do that as well so he did all that and then I have been packing Halloween orders because we launched that this week and that's been um, got heaps of orders come through and next thing after I've eaten my lunch I'm gonna actually start decorating the shop I've put a few bits and pieces up already because I needed to get my head started to clear um, so I put a few bits and pieces up but I'm gonna actually get into the rest of the decorating of the shop after lunch and getting all that Halloween stock out because I've already had a couple of people in and I've just been picking it off my little trolleys so I'm gonna go and eat my my, um, my lunch and then we're going to get to decorating and having a bit of fun.
Okay, so it's been a really busy afternoon. I have pretty much got all the shop decorated, got all the stock out now. I was struggling a little bit because since I did this last year, I have bought out new stuff and I don't have quite as much sort of um, themed area shelving anymore. So while I was doing it, I was trying to work out where I'd be able to add a little bit more shelving in to do themed stuff like this. I still have <laughs> a massive mess everywhere. I've got about 20 minutes before I close up and have to go post office. So I'll take you for a quick tour of what I've done and then I'll get to working, um, getting all this cleared up so that tomorrow I can actually start doing the stuff I need to do. Cause now that we've got Halloween up and in the shop, it's time to start working on Christmas. So that's our little trolley. I've just got a select few things on here just in case we get a warm day. And I've got my little gnome girl out the front here. She's actually on legs, but if I actually pick her up, she falls right down. And then we can stand her back up on her long legs. I really like her. I have also just done the window as well, put a few decorations in there and all the products so people can see them. And we've got the spider web there too. And then when we come in, I've just got a few of the little bits and pieces. I've been getting most of these from TK Maxx. Love this pumpkin. There's actually a little LED candle in there. This one, I'm gonna put a little tea light in. My cauldron is actually a candle and it smells absolutely amazing. And then just got a few of the little decorations next to it. We've got a bit of cobwebbing. I've got my little gnome, which we had last year as well. I found my little Frankenstein out, but he used to sing Monster Mash, but he doesn't sing anymore, but I've still stuck him on there because I think he's super cute. Um, when we look up on the ceiling, I found this little witch in um, TK Maxx. I put a bit of string on it so I could hang her up because she didn't have anything. We've also got a couple of bats hanging up and I've got the same webbing that I put up, or the netting I put up last year with the bats on it too. So really pleased with how that is. I have put all the kids stuff down on this lower shelf just so it's at the right level. Sorry parents, but, but it's so they can also see what they're doing without hanging on to the higher shelves. And then over here, I have got some candles which I just need to label up just to finish filling that shelf up. Um, I've had people coming in today buying them and things like that. So that's a little bit bare. We've got a lip balms and then I've got all of the other bits on the shelf up here. And we've got all that cobwebbing in the window too. I haven't gone quite as overboard as what I did last year because what I found is as I got halfway through October, people were coming in asking for Christmas stuff. So I'm gonna kind of have um, about mid, mid to third week of October, I will have a mix of Christmas and Halloween in here. So I didn't wanna to go too overboard, but still wanted to put enough things in. And I just remembered there was one other decoration that I bought, which I forgot to show you. And she's just like, I had to have it. And we didn't realize how cool she was until we got home. I'll take her over and show you. And how awesome is this? this little one when we saw it in TK Maxx there were no batteries in it and the lights and the eyes are just orange glass or orange plastic on them so we didn't know that it flashed and did different colors we thought we were just going to get orange eyes I'll see if I can turn it off and show you what I mean but oh this so you can see it's just orange eyes and when we got it home and we put the batteries in and discovered that they flashed and were multicolored, we were so so excited i'm so pleased i bought this one really really happy and she's just going to sit there and hopefully give everyone a laugh when she comes into the shop so i got about 15 minutes until hubby comes and picks me up because as i said at the beginning he did um show for me in today so i'm going to go and get the candles labeled that i need to get a little bit tidied up ready for tomorrow and then we'll be back in and we'll, as I said, be starting on Christmas. I got in about half hour early today. First thing I did was I went over, ordered some breakfast from Glow Nutrition, which has just been deliver delivered before I opened the door. She's got a new pumpkin spice non latte um, 
protein thing. So this is my um, breakfast for this morning. Um, I then just spent the morning sort of cleaning up, making sure that I am ready to start going for today. Just in the middle of packing an order that came through. So I'll finish getting that done. And then there's a couple of things I need to do today. First, I need to get some oils on for some soap dough for Pimp My Soap. I'm running low on a few colors and I have a new color that I want to bring out. So I'm gonna make that. And then, as I said yesterday, now that Halloween is all up and in the shop, it's time for me to now start working Christmas. Halloween will just get, uh, you know, topped up as I'm doing it, but the majority of that work's now done. So it's time to start on Christmas. First thing I'm gonna do is finish off making products that are gonna go into this advent calendar. In my little crate that I was packing before, I won't show them all, but I have got some little mini soaps um, to go in there. There's four mini soaps plus another soap, which I'm debating whether to put in or not. And then I have a list of everything else that I need to make to go into my little box. And then I also have one for melts as well. But I was hoping yesterday, I should have actually received an order from um, a company in Western Australia. It is so frustrating. I placed this order with a company in Western Australia the same day that I placed one um, in America and I got the American parcel yesterday and I'm still waiting on this Australian one. It's so frustrating that we then, I don't know, international just seems to get here quicker than domestic posts. I just don't understand it. Anyhow, that's my little high horse. Um, hopefully those fragrances that I want will be arriving today and a majority of them are gonna go into my Melt Advent Calendar, which is gonna be all limited edition fragrances not available in my normal range. Um, so hopefully I'll get there, they'll be there when I get there tonight. Um, my little American parcel, you're gonna have to wait. That is actually for Pimp My Soap um, and my patrons know what it is, um, but you'll have to wait and see what that one is because I need to do a few extra things for that. And so today's gonna be another really busy day, but lots of production. So I'm gonna get on to finishing packing this order, getting my oils ready for the soap, and then preparing the rest of this advent calendar. Let's do it.
it's almost time for me to shut the door. It has just started raining really quite heavily and I've got to get down to the post office. I need to go and find my umbrella. I've had a really productive afternoon. I have got um, three things done that are going to go in, or another three things that are done going into the advent calendar so I've got the four soaps I've got these three things so that's seven I've got five more things left two of them I'm going to make tomorrow and then the other two no the other three are things that I actually have to make at home because I use the air compressor to do them so I'll do that on my days off not Monday or Tuesday then hopefully um, I'll be able to get these advent calendars out in the next week or so or next two weeks um, I have had a notification that my fragrance order has arrived at home today so I'll bring that down the shop tomorrow and I'm hoping that there's a couple in there that I really want to use for Christmas I've got them as samples some of them are going to be going into the melt advent calendar and then some of them I'm going to keep for doing some soaps so I'm gonna all oh, the rains just lightened off now so I'm gonna go and pull all my flags and everything in from outside head off down the post office and have a relaxing evening and I'll be back in to do it all again tomorrow. Well, that is me done for the morning. <laughs> So I've just, I've brought in some stuff um, Friday morning. I needed a new box of shea butter down here. So that was a big 20 kilo box I bought in. I also needed some more soy wax because I was almost out of that down here. So that was a 15 kilo box. I um, got home yesterday and I did find this parcel, which has got all of these new fragrances in that I want to use. Um, as I said, this parcel has taken more than a week to get to me from um, from Western Australia, but what I did find when I got home, completely forgot this was being sent to me, again, from Western Australia, took two weeks, and that's why I don't use Sendal, because Sendal just takes forever to get postage anywhere. For as much as people complain about Australia Post, I have never had an issue with Australia Post in terms of heavily delayed parcels. I still don't understand why it takes Australia Post a week to get something from Western Australia to um, to Queensland and yet I can get parcels from America. The, the least I've ever waited from America is two days. I, it just blows my mind every time but um, it's all here and it, it's all, all here and I'm glad I've got my fragrances because I can get on to some other work. This one in here will open this up because this is the rest of a, another order that I've had. This is one of those boxes where it's, I'm going to look absolutely useless at opening them because I can't work out where it is with all the tape. Um, oh, almost there. So I also found a few other parcels at home as well. I've got a new set of scales from off Amazon. The type of scales that I actually use in the shop I do have listed in the description box. Um, one of the scales down here must have been about five or six years old and I wasn't sure it was going to pass the test in tag so I went to take it home and all of the electrical part fell apart on me so I bought the one in from home just before my test in tag was done and bought a new one for home. So, um, I got my new scale for that yesterday and then there were a couple of other little things that I've been wanting to work on. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I now remember there was something else in here that they wanted me to test. Ooh, <laughs> this is what, I love surprises. My brain is so fuzzled these days, or so, so fuzzy these days, I easily forget stuff. But yeah, something else in here that they want me to test so I won't show that on camera just in case, but this is from um, Seasun Soap and Cutters and they are now making wax melt molds as well. I did try making my own. So I actually got some silicon in from off of um, Barnes. I got the pinky seal and I think this is called trans seal. So it's a, a white, almost translucent. Um, if it's thin enough, you can actually see through it. Um, I do use them. Um, they weren't cheap for me to make. I didn't get very many 
um, molds out of what I purchased and I also found that um, you can actually see with this pink one a lot more if I turn it inside out excuse me squinting um, you can see that it's gone really really rough and they're really hard to actually get my um, my melt my melts out of them sometimes they snap so I did actually Kelly from Sea Sun Soaps and Cutters she sent me a couple to test and I don't know what silicon this is that they use but it works like a dream you've seen it work on my soaps in the um, in the wax melts they come out of these so easily I've not had one actually that's not true I had one break because I was being impatient <laughs> and I took it out before it was actually fully set so it did break but other than that I've um, not had any of them break they all come out beautifully um, they have a real nice shine to them whereas with the ones that I made with these they don't have a shine these ones they get that sort of shine that you get off silicon so I already have a big draw down there you can see the blue I already have half of the order um, that I put in for and she sent me the other bit as well and she said I do remember now they were testing something it looks oh oh I won't put my hand in there <laughs> that could have been really dangerous oh, you'll get to find out what that is very soon but um yeah that uh, I won't stick my hand in there anymore because <laughs> I'm going to hurt myself anyhow so I'm I'm definitely going to try this out, Kelly, and I will let you know how that goes because that's really, really exciting. And then I've got all my fragrances from, um, these ones are actually off Aussie Candle Supply. Um, I don't use them a lot. I'm always very dubious of their fragrances when it says something like you can use them at 100%. It's like, they're at 100% just how diluted are they but they do have some good fragrances that I know work well in certain products I find I don't actually like them in my candles I find that um, the wick sizes that I've worked out for my candles using aroma fragrances never work with the candle with the Aussie candle ones I always have to have a different wick size for the fragrances whereas with aroma I find you can put a wick in and the wick works with every single one of their fragrances in that same jar um, so I don't often buy them but I do want to do my melts for my advent calendar using the Aussie candle ones because they've got some really different ones and I've got this one called buzz off and it's meant to um, be something to do with getting rid of bugs but I'm not quite I'm not quite sure if it does it smells nice but I'm not it doesn't give me that sort of bug repellent sort of thing and this is the one I wanted to know if it was going to be nice for Christmas this is marshmallow mint I got mint and I got marshmallow mint oh <laughs> I think yeah I think that will be one of the Christmas smells that smells really good I didn't quite want the in your face um, I got candy cane I didn't quite want that in your face candy cane I wanted that real creamy mouth watering candy cane smell this year because Oh yeah, I, I, my customers do actually respond better to that sort of creamier sort of smell. And I think, yeah, the marshmallow mint's definitely going to win for the Christmas thing. I'm not going to smell them all because I've got quite a few. And I do, also don't want to support spoil the surprise because I do actually have customers who watch me on here as well. And I don't want to spoil the surprise of what sort of fragrances are going to be in the... Um, in the advent calendar so those ones were definitely advent calendar ones this one is actually going to be a soap because I do like this smell and they are the only place in Australia that actually stock it and that is <laughs> lemon lavender and I've got some um, it's not citrine ametrine I think it's called out the back so it's a mix of citrine and amethyst so you get that yellow and the purple so I'm going to use that to make that gemstone soap um, I've got sparkling watermelon as well because I want to make of course summer's coming up a watermelon soap so that's going to be for oh that's really nice that's going to be for a watermelon summer soap that one is going to be a melt got this one to try as well this one's called frosted cranberry and I can't get the top off this one so this is going to be another one I'm hoping to use for Christmas oh 
it's nice, but I actually think the aroma, if they've still got it, the aroma versions of cranberry was much nicer, but it's quite woody, quite, um, I was expecting it to be a little bit more tart because it's cranberry, but that, so it's more, I don't know, I would have said that's more like a holly or something, but it doesn't smell bad. It might end up being one of the melts instead. Um, oh, and black cherry. Um, my next Patreon design, so that's just been an absolute um, mission. Um, I have asked them for an embed for this month's soap that I'll do. And the suggestion that came out was for cherry. And there are not many places here in Australia that actually sell a cherry fragrance, which is body safe as well. And it took me ever to, forever to find it. But it was also at a time when on my last vlog, I said that my insurance company had come through um, saying that the underwriter was no longer renewing policies. Oh, and that smells good. That smells like bite me. Oh, that smells really good. Oh, I like that. <laughs> it was at a time when the, um, on the last vlog, I said the underwriter was no longer renewing policies with the insurance. And um, one of the things that I was kind of looking for was to try and find an insurance broker that was going to allow me to export to um, North America. Unfortunately, I still can't export to North America. I spent over a week um, on the phone. I, I literally only had two weeks to get it sorted because of the contract with the shop. I spent just over a week with all the insurance companies here in Australia, all the brokers, and they said there is not a single underwriter that will cover me to ship to the US. Now, I don't know if that is because of the products that I've got because some people I know are shipping to the US. I don't know if they are just ignoring their insurance policy or whether they have got an insurance policy because they've got slightly different products to me. I have no idea. Um, but I've been told that there isn't a single underwriter here in Australia that will cover going to the North Americas. And the reasons I've been given is one, because the litigation rates are too high. It's too much of a risk. And the second is because each state has very different rules and regulations about bath and body products and other items. And it's too hard to actually keep up with who's got what and if I send to a state where my product isn't compliant it becomes you know just this terrible mess so that's why no one will actually cover me I don't know about other people but they're not covering me to ship to North America but on top of that my insurance company then turned around and said I wasn't allowed to export anywhere and then in the next email they sent me, I wasn't even allowed to import either. So I am absolutely devastated because that meant like I was struggling to find this cherry fragrance. And I thought, you know what? I actually might treat myself to some nice fragrances from overseas. Can no longer do that because um, the company said no imports, no exports, nothing at all. And if I wanted to put the imports onto my policy, it was gonna add something like an extra three or four hundred dollars onto it. Then when you look at how much I actually do import over the year, it just wasn't worth it. So it was like, don't worry about it. But the problem was it meant that I couldn't grow my other business pimp 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 my soap, I think then. Um so I've ended up actually taking out two separate insurance policies, one to cover soy and shea and one to cover pimp my soap. And the one that I've got under pimp my soap, because it is just soap, I've been able to find a different underwriter and they allow me to import and export to everywhere but North America. So um I have been uh, I've been able to find a bit of a workaround on my micas because I can actually import them as part of Pimp My Soap and then sell them on to Soy and Shea. So we've worked way around that. But in terms of other things that aren't used in soap dough, such as fragrances and that sort of thing, I can't do it. So it does give me a year to try and find something else that allows at least the imports. But I've been left with only two weeks to sort everything out and not void my shop contract. Um, it really wasn't very good so over the next 12 months I'm gonna do a bit of a shop around find out what I can do um, and yeah I'll keep you updated on that anywho that is a rather long chat I was 
quite proud of myself because I was thinking we're going to do a short vlog this time but that was a long chat I'm sure it's about nine o'clock it is nine o'clock so I need to go and get my doors open I'm going to have a look at what this thing is that Kelly has sent for me to test and then um, we're going to get on to the working day I need to make some the couple of extra things for this um, advent calendar and there's a couple of extra products and actually also need to make another video for um, YouTube as well so Let's get on to it. <laughs> Okay, so we've just bleached down all of the worktops and scales and everything. I am about to get into making some cream, which is going to be one of the other things that go into this advent calendar. Um, and this is actually the emulsified body butter. Now, I am going to be filming this on camera as well because now that we've got the Pimp My Soap website, I am slowly working on um, doing all the recipes I've been sharing on Patreon, putting them into a format that I can now put onto Pimp My Soap. And this will be the next one that will be going on in a couple of weeks' time. Once I've got it all written up and, and everything else um, and answering some of the questions that I know have been asked on Patreon and putting them into the recipe that will be for sale over there. So I'm going to steal this camera and I am going to go and make this um, emulsified body butter and then you'll see that video in a few weeks time. Okay, it's about 20 past one and I haven't eaten my lunch yet so before it was too early now it's too late but it doesn't really matter because hubby's on a late today so it doesn't matter what time I eat lunch I'm not gonna ruin dinner I can eat that whenever I feel like so I'm I'm gonna go and sit down and have some lunch I have got all of the soap dough that I needed to do I've got one tucked away on the cure rack already I need to try and work into space so we can get some more on there um, and these are all the others that we have done these were just a few that need to go in and we've got a new color I'm doing a gold some people have had that as a bit of a, um, a tester and everyone has reported back that it's really nice and they love the shine so I'm gonna go ahead and put gold into the range as well I have also taken my moisturizer out of my Bain Marie, just given it its first blitz. So I'll give it its next blitz in a moment and then I'll be able to do the rest of the cool down phase, hopefully before I go home. And tomorrow I'll be able to pop that one up. Um, I've had a few people coming in and out the shop as well. Um, lots of interest in the Halloween stuff. So I am gonna do a quick um, stock take and see if I actually need to stock up on anything, see what's um, more popular. Um, but yeah, I think for now I'm going to sit down and I'm going to read my book. So I'm actually really tired thanks to some idiots out there last night. <laughs> That's all I can really say about them. In fact, I can hear, hear another one out there now. Um, I usually, before I go to sleep, I like to read my book. I did say in the last vlog I was starting to read the You series and I finished the first book, which almost runs the same as the first season of you on netflix and i've started the second book which is called hidden bodies and it is very different well they've got the same characters but it's a very very different storyline in the um hidden bodies book so i've been reading that and i got to about 9 30 last night and decided i couldn't stay awake anymore so i went to sleep and then i was woken up and i looked at my watch and it was about 1 and there was there must have been at least two people don't know how many people were in the cars but there were at least two cars out on the main um way that runs past our house and they were hooning up and down up and down screeching their tires doing donuts around the roundabouts oh, it was revving engines and all sorts and it went on for about half an hour usually the police are pretty quick and they're there within 10 15 minutes and 
shooing them all off but last night it went on for a full half an hour and then after that I just couldn't get back to sleep so I am a bit tired today but I've got so much work to do so I am going to sit down have my lunch read a bit more of my book because almost at the end of it and then I'm going to read the third book I'm pretty sure that I've got the third book sitting there as well so I'll be reading that as well um, but I am going to take half an hour out for a lunch break I think Okay, so I've got about half an hour until I am going to close up for the day. I have cleaned up out the back. It was a bit of a mess out there. Um, everything that was um, clean and dry in the dishwasher has been put away and everything else is sitting on the draining board. Then I restacked it with all the um, soap pots that I had and that is now on cleaning all of them. I have just printed up the labels to go on the um, the creams that I am making for the advent calendar so that's all done and I'm now labeling my little tubes here um, while listening to the magpies out the front of the shop singing away they've been singing to anyone that sits on the bench across from the shop today they just sit there singing away it's really cute um, so yeah I've got all that done I do have a parcel to take up to the post office what well, last one for the week the rest will go out any that come in on um, late tonight or over the weekend will go out on Monday's post um, I have had a message to say that there is another Amazon delivery at the house I left home this morning and said to hubby there will be another parcel arriving today I think it would be, actually be more um, more of a shock if I said to him there's no parcels arriving today so I've got that message that because that's arrived I am going to stop off at a craft store called Lynn Craft on the way home I would much rather go to Spotlight but it's out of the way from where I am so we're going to stop off there and then I'm going to show you what I am getting up to at home which I'm hoping to actually um, start selling in the shop as well so I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes, label, well it won't take me 20 minutes but I'll spend the next sort of few minutes labelling up these um, balms and then I will be um, getting everything ready to head on home. So I'll see you at home again. I am home we are in the office you may have be familiar from that side we are on the opposite side today um, um the birds have been fed dogs been fed I've been fed and now it's time for me to do something for myself now this is something I have wanted to do for a very long time and have just never actually found the time to do this um, but now that I've been in the shop for over a year I've got my work habits all sorted out and all of that work is at the shop 20 minutes away I have recently found I've been starting to get a lot more time just for myself and I've been wanting to pick up some of my old hobbies again and one of my old hobbies was sewing and this is something I've been wanting to make for my business for some time and we've got a little lip balm holder now this one is rough well I say rough it's pretty good actually for the first time in sewing in must be at least six years since I um turned this machine on which is just here and she swore at me she really did but I gave her a little bit of love and care and she's working for me again but I've been wanting to make these little lip balm holders for such a long time and 
um, I decided the other night I'm gonna pull my machine out I'm gonna do it I am actually gonna make this little tag bit a little bit um, shorter um, but the rest of it I'm pretty happy with the design there was just a couple of other little things in the makeup of it that I'm gonna change um, as I get into making them but one of the reasons I decided I wanted to do them is because once upon a time I used to be a very keen sewer and this is before I actually had any of my businesses I used to come home from work and I used to lock myself away in my craft room at my sewing machine and I used to make quilts and my love of quilting actually started when I was in high school now excuse the absolute state of it but please keep in mind this is over 20 years old and is one of my first quilts I ever made. It started off as a block of the month class. I'd bought a brand new machine and um, they said to come and do block of the month and they would show us lots of little techniques so like we've got some cutaway applique work on here this block's really quite bad now but it was all about how to do um, weaving a ribbon smocking and that sort of stuff um, we had how to do your stand up applique again it's getting <laughs> really really bad but there was lots of other things we've got like little white on white um, there's all sorts of different things we've actually got a proper smocking block over there as well all these different blocks and when I got to a point I said well what am I going to do with all these blocks of fabric and that was when the girls took me under their wing and showed me how to quilt and this became the very first one I ever did very very basic but it was still my first one I was in high school and it's traveled everywhere with me I absolutely love it um, I don't use it very much these days because as you can see it is all falling apart because I have used it so much and the dogs have jumped on it in the past and ripped some of the fabric but I have done lots of other quilts as well I've done baby quilts my mum's got a lot of my quilts um, I've got a few in our cupboard as well that do still get used but excuse the mess <laughs> this box down here is jam-packed full of cotton fabric as is this box in here and we're not talking the really cheap fat quarters that you can get in your dollar store we're talking really good high quality cotton fabrics and they've kind of just been sitting here for years because I haven't had a chance to um, do any of my sewing and I decided that I wanted to try and make some of these lip balm holders. So I went into the box, I pulled out the first piece of fabric that I found in there, really actually quite a pretty fabric as well, and decided to have a look at how people were making them. Decided that they were relatively easy, got onto Amazon. I ordered myself the little swivel D-ring clip things. Um, I went to um, spotlight on my way home. I actually need some cotton tape for another idea. And then I had a heart attack at how much these reels of cotton have gone up. <laughs> Honestly, it's been years and years since I've actually had to buy cotton. Um, when I was quilting, every time there was a sale, I would always buy my cotton threads. And I've only ever sewn with cotton. That was what I was taught as part of my sort of quilting experience was that when you are quilting, you are using cotton fabric. So use cotton thread because as your cotton starts to break down, polyester doesn't. The polyester starts rubbing on the cotton and then wears that cotton down even further. So I was always taught to sew with cotton thread. And boy, has it gone up because I've still got a lot of these from when I was sewing um, and I don't think I've actually bought thread for at least seven years must be at least seven years and I can tell you when I was in high school um, I went to buy this today and it was $25 for the big <laughs> real I mean it was eight dollars for the hundred meter so I figured that the 800 meter roll was better value at 25 but I can tell you I wouldn't have been paying 25 dollars for these when I was in high school so it was a bit of a shock but this was always the um the cotton 
that I was taught to sew with. Um, it's a Gudeman, it's just the 100% cotton. I don't know what color it is, but I was always taught to get this color because it blends in. It's a neutral color that blends in with pretty much everything. I, I very, very rarely sew with white, which is why there's still so much on there. This tends to blend in with a lot more colors and you don't have to color change as often. Um, the only time I do color change is if I'm solely sewing with dark colors, but if I've got a mix, this, um, this cotton thread goes with most fabrics. So I bit the bullet and bought myself a new one of these. I've still probably got about half on my machine, but I decided I was gonna give this a go. And um, oh, the other thing I got, I've, I've seen, this has really changed since I did sewing. Everyone's got these little clippy things. They're horrible. <laughs> I probably will still continue using um, using my pins because my I use a walking foot on my machine um, anyone who does quilting will know what a walking foot is um, generally on your machines you have these flat feet that come with it when you do quilting you buy what's called a walking foot and you have feet on your actual machine and then your foot has feet as well so when you are trying to sew over these really bulky fabrics the foot actually walks over the fabric and it doesn't all bunch and gather. And the real advantage to having that walking foot is that you can usually sew straight over the top of pins if you put them in going across your fabric rather than up, rather than vertically. So I'll try and get used to these things, but yeah, I'm not really keen on them. But anyhow, I am going to get this machine turned on. Um, first thing I actually need to do, I want to create some little tags to stick on the side of these. But I will, um, I will show you my machine. It's one of my pride and joy. I was, I bought this one when we lived up in Cairns, so it's it's probably about twelve years old, and it took me a long time to save up for this baby. But this is it. So I'm a bit of a Janome girl. This is my machine. I actually learned to sew on a Toyota, which for any of my older viewers, my toy, oh, it was my mother's Toyota sewing machine that had these like little cogs that you used to sit on the top of it to get all the different pretty patterns. Um, and that was the machine I learned to sew on. But after that actually gave up, I went to Janome and have never gone back. And this particular machine, I don't think they make it anymore, is the Memory Craft 6500. And it was designed specifically for quilters. It is a hugely heavy base on here. The only disadvantage I've ever found with this machine is that you don't can't take the bottom of this to get a free arm. It is just solid. And that was so that when you put your quilts through, it doesn't pull your machine from off of the, the table. And then it also has this great big extra table that you can put on here to support the weight of your quilts. But this was my machine. And then on the back here, we've got all the, the different stitches and things. And she did swear at me when I first turned her on the other day, but we gave her a little bit of love and attention, cleaned out all the dust bites and everything. And um, she's working well. Here's my little walking foot that I was talking about. So it's a great big chunky foot. And under here are little feet that help to pull the fabric through. So that is my machine. And I am going to First of all, go and make some little tags to go in these little lip balm holders that I'm going to be making. And then I'm gonna go and find some more fabric, cut it out and make a few of these tonight.
Okay, so I'm gonna give my machine a little rest. She, you know, I can't work her too hard now that I've pulled her back out. But I have managed to do myself four of these, all in the same pattern. And this is what I say about um, when I'm working with my soap dough, that I tend to do a progressive line of things. So I do four or five of the same um, thing each time. So basically I did all my little top tags first and then I did all the, um, the outside sewing and then I turned them all in out and I just find that working that way I get a lot more done and I think a lot of that does come back to my quilting as well because you do a lot of repetitive steps before putting it together but I do find you get more done that way um, so I've got the four of them done all in this little butterfly fabric there are a couple of differences between the little prototype one that I made this will be mine and the one that I'm going to have available in store and online so with my little prototype I was trying to um, get measurements I was looking at what other people um, who do similar things um, had as their measurements but I think my tubes were just all slightly different um, size so I had to just adapt it just a little bit um, I also had to change the width of my little tag up here so this one you can see the little D ring moves around a lot this one it's only a little bit backwards and forwards just enough that it can still move but not so much that it's you know going to get all all over the place and stuff like that I also made this put it inside a little bit more so it's not quite as long and I added my little tag on here with that it's a lip balm holder and my logo so people are always reminded where to come and get their lip balms from so really really happy with how they've um, come up when you put your lip balms in they are quite a tight fit they're not so tight that you have to force the fabric but they are tight enough that when you're walking along with them on your keys your lip balm's not going to fly out but they do to get them back out I usually just squeeze the bottom and then they come out as well so I'm really really happy with how they've come up these are also um, the, the right size for my mini biteys as well for people who constantly get bitten by nasty little bugs um, you can keep a little tube of mini biteys with you in these as well so really really pleased I'm gonna leave it at these four for tonight because I'm getting a little bit tired after last night's lack of sleep I can hear motorbikes out in the road now um, what I will end up doing tomorrow is I'll go through that big stash of um, material because I'm not gonna make them all in this butterfly fabric in fact that's all I've got left of the butterfly fabric so I will finish that off so we get quite a few but I'm going to go through the fabric box and see what other things because I want them to appeal to everybody so both men and women um, and I think I would like some for the young children as well because they always like lip balms and I've got a few ideas for some upcoming Christmas um, gift packs that can include these in them as well just for something a little bit different but I am going to go and make myself a cup of coffee, read a little bit more of my book because I'm almost at the end of it now. Um, and then we will be in the shop tomorrow to finish off yeah, some of the things. And I think I'm actually going to fill my melt tank up tomorrow. I'll see what I feel like, see what else needs to be done. Good morning. Um, it's been a busy morning. I have just finished potting up all of the cream that will be going into, um, into my advent calendar. And... <laughs> I messed up. I thought my tins were going to hold 60 grams and they possibly could hold 60 grams but I just have a feeling that they'll leak so I've taken it back down to 55 grams which meant that I had 150 grams worth of lotion left over so guess who gets to take some home because it just smells so good. I, it's not going to take me long to use that it smells absolutely delicious so i've got myself a pot of um, moisturizer to take home too um i've made, been and made myself a coffee it is a dull miserable day it actually has i can see this really fine mist of rain out there today so i'm not expecting today to be busy in here the rain always keeps people away but that means i've got a chance to get lots of things done so i'm going to take the opportunity to do that got a few orders I need to pack as well so that's okay um, I woke up this morning um, I actually finished 
my book last night um, after I finished sewing I went and read my book and I actually finished it before going to sleep and that was the hidden bodies and then this morning I got up and I downloaded the third um, book from off of the Kobo website and I've started to read that one and it's called You Love Me and again the same characters that were in the initial series but slightly different storyline which isn't actually too bad normally I hate it when books and movies don't marry up but it because I actually watched the series first and now reading the book I don't know what to expect in the book I don't know what's coming next so it's really actually quite good that the storylines are very different I hate it when a movie and a book when a movie's made of a book and they change one or two vital things or leave something out that's quite important um, I that really bothers me but for some reason this isn't bothering me because the creative license that the TV series has taken has given a completely different story um, although it's along the same lines anyone who's read the book and watched the series will know what I'm talking about if not go and watch the series it's actually quite interesting to watch um, so anyway back on to what we're doing today I did say last night I was going to fill my oil tank up and ready for soap making but what is actually more important is that I um, make some melts for the next advent calendar that will be going out so I'm going to get my melt tank on and I'm going to start on that because it is going to be quiet today it means I can actually make quite a few different fragrances and not irritate people but it also means that the smell will waft down into the street and it always drags people in so that's what I decided I will do today I'm just going to finish um, labeling those jars up and pop them away um, and yeah and then we'll see what else we actually get done today as well because I've, I've just got a feeling it's going to be a very productive day today so let's get into it okay so I'm just going through the fragrances and check in which ones that I putting inside the ones I'm definitely going to use in soap, definitely going to use in melts and then deciding about all the others and I'm still really undecided about this buzz off and I think what's happened is I actually didn't read the fragrance notes when I ordered it, I just saw buzz off and I thought that's going to be a really good summer fragrance, should have a bit of citronella in, that sort of outdoor entertainment, get rid of those bugs. Um, I should have probably read the fragrance notes because there's absolutely no citronella in it. I don't know, I, I don't usually do that but hmm. Um, it's got tropical berries, red currant, which I can definitely smell that real tart sort of smell in it. Um, acacia berry, there's some sweet honey, and again, I can smell that honey, and that's probably where we're getting, getting in that whole buzz sort of thing. Um, rose petals, fresh greens, and musk and vanilla. I actually don't get much musk and vanilla out of it. It does have that sort of sweet smell of honey, but that tartness of the red currant in here. I mean, it does say aromatic... Um, aroma of beehive honey with spicy undertones from unique pine trees of Greece. So I've got it all over me. Clearly nothing to do with keeping bugs away. Um, I can't decide. I actually don't think it's going to make a really nice melt. I think that real uh, honey fragrances to me can have a real sickly sort of appeal to them after a little while. So what I'm actually thinking is this is going to make a much nicer soap than it is going to make a melt. So that's going to probably just stay in my soap box instead. I just, yeah, I'm, um, yeah, it's going to be a soap. I think I can actually see it being a really beautiful soap. It says it's got zero vanillin on it. So I'm happy to actually keep that aside for soap making instead. And then I've picked out my other ones, um, which will be going into the melt. So let's get to making them. I think I've got enough molds down here to make the six I've picked out.
For a day that I thought was going to be relatively quiet, it has been quite busy today, which I'm not complaining about at all, but I was still actually able to be really productive as well. Um, I have just wrapped up all the little soap samples um, for the soap dough. These will be going, I'll pop on what colours they are and out into my sample box out the back. We'll be wrapping the rest of the soap dough up tomorrow. I generally like to leave it sitting in its sort of wrapped up state for at least 48 hours just to allow all the colors to completely morph and change back to what they should be and then i can make sure that they are fine for sale um, so they will do that tomorrow i managed to get um seven um different fragrances done in my melts um i should actually bring the rest of the the molds back down here to use but i don't have enough storage space for them so i might just make them over the next sort of three working days um so i am actually a third of the way through them um tomorrow we'll unmold those get them all wrapped up and i did i've already printed up the labels for them so that's all right to go for tomorrow um what else have we done um i made the other product that is going into the um, advent calendar that's the final one i can make down here at the shop so the rest of it i'll be making at home and i also made a another batch of this stuff this is some magnesium lotion and i've been wanting to make this for so long i've been testing and playing with recipes and i finally came up with one that i really really liked and um, I, it's at home somewhere. I have to keep asking hubby where it is when I want to use it because he really, really likes it. Now, the one that I made for myself, I've actually got an oil in there, which I've been able to locate it, but it's not easy to find. And um, I decided to tweak the recipe a little bit to, to see if another oil would actually work in here. And it appears that it has it's quite a yellowish color because of the essential oil blend i put in here there is a little bit of orange essential oil in there so it is meant to be a white cream but this one has gone that yellowy color the reason i was looking for a easier to find oil in here is because i'm going to turn my air conditioner off is because this will be the recipe that i'll be sharing on patreon hopefully it will be out um, this week uh, there will be a more detailed video and before everyone goes rushing off please listen to this bit um, it will be on patreon on the five dollar level for three months the ten dollar level for six months and if you don't feel like or if you don't actually want to join patreon for the recipe i have also done it up as a full recipe um, to sell on the pimp my soap website so you can actually just purchase it as a one-off um, if you join on the $5 level, you get the basic recipe. If you join at the $10 level, you get that basic recipe. And I always then give a couple of tweaks of how you can actually change the recipe to make it into something else. And I've got a few different versions of it. And if you are purchasing the video, uh, purchasing the recipe off the Pimp My Soap, I will actually have all the tweaks in the recipe as well. So um, it, you do get those extras when you purchase it outright. You don't have to join Patreon anymore um, because it was causing me just a little bit of grief um, with how the recipes were working and it will stay on the Pimp My Soap website for as long as it's there. But I will have more details on that. So um, hopefully I will have another video out of me making the full batch of this. And then you can um, come on over if you are interested in the recipe and have a go of it. But this one's smelling really good. I'm going to actually leave it sit overnight. Make sure it doesn't do any funky stuff overnight like splitting. But it pretty much looks the same as when I made um, my previous batch. So I'm pretty confident that this um, little tweak for an easier oil... Um, will be there and what I will be doing in the the purchased recipe and on the $10 level is telling you what that um what that other oil is that I was using that kind of was a little bit harder to find um but I'm actually going to go head over to the shops because I actually feel like a bit of salmon for dinner tonight so I'm going to go and see if I can find a piece over at the shops then head on home and um I'll probably make a couple more of those lip balm holders and then either sit and watch some rubbish on Netflix or read my book. So we'll be back tomorrow, Sunday, for market day.
morning guys um it's sunday it's a bit gray and miserable again today but it's actually a bit cooler got really really humid last night um got very very warm during the night as well and it has rained a lot during um the evening um but i've just got down here it looks like a lot of the market stalls have cancelled for today because there's hardly any stalls out there and i do get it because um you don't want your stock to get wet i've been there done that but this market is on um, every day of the year rain hail or shine that's how it is actually advertised but so many market stalls actually pull out and the funny thing is like from speaking from experience I know that the rain actually doesn't really affect that market too much because people still come out to get their fruit and veg um, but there are a lot of stalls missing so it has a really funny atmosphere out there and I would also suspect that means that the um, the busker won't turn up and I completely understand that because they really don't need all their amps and everything getting wet in the rain. <coughs> but hopefully people will still turn up. I've got the, all the Halloween stuff to go out there. Um, I'm just having a bit of a quick clean up out the back here. I've still got about 10 minutes until I open up so I'm going to get everything cleaned up out the back here. Um, and then we've got all of that packing and wrapping and stuff to do today. I did have a bit of a bonus win last night. Um, I was I finished sewing the um, that butterfly fabric. I've managed to get myself a total of nine of those butterfly ones in the clips or in the lip balm holders. And then I found this beautiful orange fabric in my box. It's a mottled orange and it's got gold sparkle all the way through it so I've got all of that cut out I'm going to get nine out of that too so really excited and I've used two pieces of fabric um, <laughs> it's a little mission of mine to use all this fabric up um, so I got that out and then I went to do the top stitching and although I use that cream stitching to do all my inside sewing and it doesn't show through I do kind of match my top stitching and when I looked in my box of threads I realized I'm pretty low on all my top stitching colors so I jumped online to see if um, spotlight were open what time they were open till today and if they actually had the Goodman thread in there and it came up with an ad for Amazon and there was a pack of 20 100 meter or 110 yard cotton reels in all these different colors so the full rainbow spectrum plus your black there was some grays a couple of these this color i do use as well and it was less than 39 dollars, so it's under two dollars a roll so i decided i would get that so i had i usually have a full sort of rainbow colors in my top stitching box so that's going to actually stop that up so i was really stoked the only thing is i'm going to have to wait until monday for it to arrive before I can do anything but I was still really really happy with that price so yeah I'm going to get on to sewing some of those on Monday tonight I will do some of the social media stuff that I actually had planned to do on Monday I'll do that tonight instead of sewing and then Monday I can sew once I get my um my cottons because they generally are um, delivered in the morning with our um, Amazon driver so that was a good find um, I've got a niche on my back. All right, I'm going to finish getting this lot cleaned up before we open up the shop. And then we will be doing a whole heap of labelling and packaging today. What fun!
Yeah, so it's been a really busy morning so far. Um, everyone's loving the Halloween stuff. The kids are over the moon with all the decorations in here. It's been quite cute to watch their reactions. They have managed to find a band to go outside. You can probably hear them. They are extremely loud. And although they are actually quite good singers, a lot of the songs they're singing are not market appropriate. I don't think singing things like Creep is very appropriate for a market that is in a area that has a lot of retirement aged people in here. Um, and they're also, you may be able to hear it in the video, I don't know, a lot of them they sing at double the speed of what they should actually be sung and it just gets really great on the head. This isn't the first time they've been here and every time they are at this market singing I go home with a massive headache but today it is super duper loud and I've had so many people come into the shop complaining about how loud it is out there. It's like I can't do anything you need to speak to the market organizer and I don't dare say a word to her because um yeah, we're not liking the fact that I've got a successful shop anymore, so it is what it is, but hopefully um, they'll have a break shortly so I can have a break too. I am almost through doing all of the um, melts, just got this one and the last one to do. Then I'm going to get started on wrapping all of the soap dough and getting that packaged up um, to go out back. So it is one o'clock and I've got about half an hour until I get to shut the door and go home for and have my weekend. It has been a, such a wonderful day. The music stopped at about half past 11. Um, not long after I actually did that bit of recording and said it was really loud in here, I had a couple of people come in and mention it. I said, look, I can't do anything about it. You might actually want to say something to the organizer. And next thing you know, the music had actually been turned down. So that was really good. And they stopped at um, half past 11 because a bit of rain came through. And like I said, at the beginning of the day, they don't really want their equipment getting wet. Don't get me wrong. They were very good at singing. They were just awfully loud and not appropriate for the environment that we're in. They were probably more appropriate to a picnic in the park or a pub band or something like that. So they weren't terrible. In fact, some of the songs they sang were quite good apart from the ones they sang too fast. Um, but it's been a lovely couple of hours. I have got so much done. All of the melts that I made, they're all wrapped out the back um, so I can make some more on Wednesday when I'm back in the store. All the soap dough is packaged out the back. I need to take pictures of the gold and that will be up on the Pimp My Soap website this week. I have got together a in the grey bag all the bits that I need to take home so I can make the last two items at home for the, um, for the Bath and Body Advent calendar. So then I can start putting that together. I'm so excited about it. And I've also put in there all the things I actually need to take home and photograph. So I've actually redone the labels for my Bydees Balm. Um, so I'll be taking new photos for that um, and some of the soaps that are on my cure rack are also ready to be photographed so all of that's in the bag I'm also taking home in the pink basket is all my dirty laundry so all the cloths you see me using each week I may all get thrown into the um, the big basket at the end of each day um, even though it might look like I'm using the same one they get thrown in the basket and I take it home each week and give everything a good wash and bring it back down um, so yeah I've got about 20 probably I've got about 25 minutes now 
I am going to sit down and read my book because I have done absolutely everything I need to do and I don't think anyone's going to come in so I might just take half an hour just to sit and read because tonight when I get home I am going to start um, doing some of the admin work that I need to do because I'm pretty sure my hubby has got Tuesday off so if I do my work today and Monday, we can spend the day together on Tuesday. I hope you've enjoyed coming along with me this week. I'm really, really hoping I'm able to keep this one short. By the looks of things, it might be a little bit shorter than those two hour vlogs I've been putting out. But as I said, I hope you've enjoyed coming along with me this week as I decorated the shop and launched my Halloween. Um, if you did, why not leave me a thumbs up, any comments down below. And until the next video comes out, I hope you have a good one and I'll see you then. Bye.